All right, let's look at 8.5 solving exponential equations. Example 1, solving, we need to solve 3 to the power of x is equal to 2 to the power of 2x minus 3. When we're looking at this particular question, we can see that there are two powers equal to each other. The hard part of this is the fact that these two powers do not have the same base. So, we can't use our usual conventions of having two powers equal where they have the same base. So what's our next strategy? Well, when we're solving exponential equations, we want to take, and we have two powers equal to each other with different bases, we want to take the log of both sides. So we take the log of the left side equal to the log of the right side. And we're just going to use log base 10. Once we do that, what we can do is now using the power law of logarithms and take the exponent and bring it to the front. And that results in the following line. So what we have here is the exponent has moved to the front and now we have this expression here. Automatically, you should be thinking of log 3 and log 2 as just regular numbers that are being multiplied by brackets. So your next logical step is to expand the following. So we expand this, and we take log 3 times x plus 1 times log 3 is equal to 2x times log 2 minus 3 times log 2. What will that result in? Well, now we should be able to see how we could combine things that are important. For example, we want to combine the x's together and then the numbers on the other side. So I'm taking all the x's and putting them together and putting the numbers on the other side. How will that help us? Well, we can common factor, looking this, we can common factor the x's out. So we take x out and we common factor it and get log 3 minus 2 log 2 is equal to the other side. Once we do that, we have x by itself, we can divide by this ugly thing here and bring it to the other side. Once we do that, we can plug it into the equation or if you look very carefully, this is going to be 2 to the negative 3 minus log 3. So there's a bunch of things we can do. We can simplify the numerator to a single logarithm, simplify the denominator to a single logarithm, and then we can finally get the answer. So how are we going to do that? Well, if I simplify the numerator to a single logarithm, I'm going to pull out a negative so that I get the sum of two logs. And when I get the sum of two logs, that is equal to, using the multiplication law of logarithms, log of 8 times 3. The 8 came from the 2 to the power of 3 using the power law. And the 3 is over here, and there would be a plus sign here because I common factored a negative out. So that would be log of 24 in the numerator. In the denominator, I would have the log of 3 over 4. The reason I would have 3 over 4 here, folks, is because, noting here, this 2 would become an exponent, so that would be 2 to the 2. And then three, mi log of 3 minus log of 4 means you can use the quotient law for logarithms, and that will give us log of 3 over 4. And then finally, we can just simplify and then plug it into the calculator to get the value. What's expected is that you should be able to get the exact answer before you touch the calculator to get the approximate answer, rounding your answers to four decimal places unless otherwise stated. All right, next example. Part B. 2 to the 2x plus 3 minus 4 to the x is equal to 224. So that's your question there. What did I do in that first step to get this answer? Well, note here that these two are almost ha could have the exact same base. And that's exactly what I did here. I made them both have the same base and then equal to 224. Why did I do that? Well, I have something here that will help me be able to get the answer. Note this. Right here you have a sum in an exponent. And you know the sum of exponents results from a product of two powers. So 2 to the 2x times 2 to the 3 is equal to 2 to the 2x plus 3. Minus 2 to the 2x is equal to 224. So what we have here 
is 2 to the 2x and 2 to the 2x. We have the same concept here. So we could common factor the 2 to the 2x to get a result in the answer. That will be 2 to the 3, which is 8, minus one of these that gets pulled out. So we're common factoring 2 to the 2x out, and that equals 224. So I common factor that out, and this is what I get. 2 to the 2x taken out times 8 minus 1, and 8 minus 1 is going to be 7, is equal to 224. 2 to the 2x times 7 is equal to 224, divide by 7, and we get this value, 2 to the 2x is equal to 32, 2 to the 2x is going to equal 2 to the 5, and you guys know that 2 to the 5 and 2 to the 2x, we can drop the basis so that we have 2x is equal to 5. Therefore, x is equal to 2.5 or 5 over 2. Both answers would be acceptable because they are exact. So, what happens when we have more complicated questions than this? What do we need to do? Let's look at another problem that involves the same type of question. Here we go. What do we do in a situation that looks like this? In this situation, we don't have the convenience of having something where I can make them both the same base with the same exponent. They have different exponents. What can I do? If I took out 4 to the 2x out, I would end up having a 4 to the negative x over here. If I took out 4 to the x here, I would have 4 squared uh, over here, or 4x over here. So really, we can't just common factor like we would normally do. So we need to figure out a better way. Well, let's say we're going to, our, our offender here, the part that's causing us the biggest problem is this 4 to the x. So let the 4 to the x represent a special x. So we're going to make it the Roman numeral 10, but we're going to call it special x. We let special x equal 4 to the x. That's what's causing us the biggest difficulty here. And if you learn how to do this here, it's going to help you in calculus to be able to understand how to make something complicated look a lot more simpler. All right, so let special x equal 4 to the x and represent the top equation with special x's instead. Well, that will be 2 to the, now what will this be? If I have special x, 4 to the x, what will be left? Well, it will be special x, that's our 4 to the x, squared. So one more time, when I take this 4 to the x right here and I and I replace it, that will be 4 to the x gets replaced with that special x, I'm going to be left with the 2, that's the square. Minus 5 times special x is equal to 12. No, or, or we're moving the 12 over, so it's minus 12 is equal to 0. Why did I do that? Well, if you look here, what we have is something we're very familiar with, and that is a quadratic formula. So essentially, that first question was a quadratic embedded in it, and we couldn't see it until we replaced it with a special x. So we have 2 to 2 special x squared minus 5 special x minus 12 is equal to 0. So we can factor this as such, okay? And once we factored it, factored it we can solve for special x. But remember, folks, the reason I called it special x to begin with is that's not what we started with. We started with this problem right here. So we need to bring back what special x was. Special x is 4 to the x. So we set special x back to what it originally was, which is 4 to the x. And now look that we can begin to solve this. Looking at this first one, you should automatically see there's an anomaly here. Something's wrong. What's wrong is that that's not possible. It's not possible because 4 to the x can't equal a negative number. So that's not possible. We look on the other side. 4 to the x is equal to 4. Hopefully you see that in this case, x is equal to 1. So this is the solution to part C. It is only one possible answer. Let's look a little bit more complicated. What happens if it isn't as evident as it was in this question? Looking on page 510, number 12a, there's a question there that involves the following. And you can see that this time we have 4 to the x plus 6 times 4 to the negative x is equal to 5. What can we do here? Well, instead of 
x, special x equal 4 to the x, we still have this weird negative going on. So why don't we make special x equal the smallest possible uh, power? Just like in the previous example, we want to make special x equal the smallest power. We didn't choose this one, folks. We chose this one. And we do the same for the next problem. So for the next question, it's the exact same thing that we do. We're going to choose special x to equal 4 to the negative x. So we're continuing on with the same idea. So 4 to the negative x. So now we replace 4 to the x with, uh, we're going to take out 4 to the negative x. So that means I'm going to have special x to the negative 1. That will give us 4 to the x. And then plus 6 times special x equals 5. What do we do now? Well, now what we want to do is rewrite this as 1 over special x plus 6 times special x equals 5. Well, you have a fraction with a uh, whole variable and then a number. What we want to do here is that make everything as a common denominator. So I did that on the right hand side and then I moved everything over so that on the, sorry, the left hand side, the left hand side will have everything all over the special denominator equal to zero. Now why would I do that? When I move this five over, that creates a quadratic in the numerator over that special denominator, okay, equal to zero. I don't want to just multiply across with this special x because essentially you're eliminating this denominator. And previous in the previous units, we looked at rational expressions. And what happens in rational expressions, by eliminating the denominator, we're eliminating an important piece of the problem, especially when it refers to graphs, the asymptotes in particular, or the holes. So looking at this, we want to factor the numerator, and we're going to do that, okay? Now, some of you had to look at it this way, so I'll just show you what happened. Some of you want to multiply by special x on both sides, and again, I refer to why you can't do that, and that would be because when you do that, you're going to get eliminate that denominator, okay? And that's so important that we don't eliminate that denominator. So, can't do that, folks. So we go back to the other way. Don't forget there's a restriction, but if you look carefully, that restriction is already covered because in exponential functions, this can never equal zero anyway. So we're okay there. And we move forwards on to the following. And we factor the numerator. Okay, so we're going to factor the numerator. And this is what we end up with. So let's go slowly to figure it out. We factor the numerator. And we get this. And then we solve for x. We get these values. And what happens here is we replace special x with 4 to the negative x back again because that wasn't what we started with. And then we solve for x. The reason we have answers in both of these questions is because of the fact that in this time, both answers are positive, so they're both possible. So we take the log of both sides for this part, take the log of both sides using the power law, we'll end up with this, and then you would just use your calculator to get the final answer. And for this, I found a common base of 2, or you could have taken the log of both sides, you will get still x is equal to half for this one, and for this one, you will get an approximate answer. All right, folks, that's the end of video one. We'll go on to video two for the rest of this.